Hey guys, welcome to Macintosh Weekly, and today this video is about macOS Sonoma 14 and 6 update. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And now let's begin. Apple today released macOS Sonoma 14.6, the sixth update to the macOS Sonoma operating system that launched last year. macOS Sonoma 14.6 comes a little over two months after the release of macOS Sonoma 14.5, to update your Mac to macOS 14.6, open System Settings, then go to the Software Update section, and then check for updates here. You can see the update is available for my device. This macOS Sonoma 14.6 update size is around 2.19 gigabytes for my device. Click on Update Now, and then agree to the SLA to begin the update on your device and enter the password when prompted. And as you can see, the device has been successfully updated to macOS Sonoma 14.6, and the build number is 23G80. Moving forward and talking about macOS Sonoma 14.6 release notes. This macOS Sonoma updates improve the stability, performance, or compatibility of your Mac and are recommended for all macOS Sonoma users. This macOS Sonoma 14.6 update adds support for using up to two external displays when the laptop lid is closed on 14-inch MacBook Pro with M3 chip and also provides important bug fixes and security updates. Moving forward and talking about about the security content of macOS Sonoma 14.6. For customers' protection, Apple doesn't disclose, discuss, or confirm security issues until an investigation has occurred and patches or releases are available. Apple security documents reference vulnerabilities by CVEID when possible. For more information about security, see the Apple product security page. Regarding accounts, which was impacted by Boring, a malicious application may be able to access private information. The issue was addressed with improved checks. Regarding Apache, which was impacted by multiple issues in Apache. This is a vulnerability in open source code and Apple software is among the affected projects. The CVID was assigned by a third party. Regarding APFS, which was impacted by a malicious application may be able to bypass privacy preferences. The issue was addressed with improved restriction of data container access. Regarding Apple Mobile File Integrity, which was impacted by Xenthus, an app may be able to bypass privacy preferences, and an app may be able to leak sensitive user information. A downgrade issue was addressed with additional code signing restrictions. Regarding Apple VA, which was impacted by PERG. Processing a maliciously crafted file may lead to unexpected app termination. The issue was addressed with improved memory handling. Regarding ASPTCP, which was impacted by an app with root privileges may be able to execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges. A buffer overflow issue was addressed with improved memory handling. Regarding core media, which was impacted by processing a maliciously crafted video file may lead to unexpected app termination. An out-of-bounds write issue was addressed with improved input validation. Regarding curl, which was impacted by processing a maliciously crafted video file, may lead to unexpected app termination. This is a vulnerability in open source code, and Apple software is among the affected projects. Regarding desktop services, which was impacted by use, an app may be able to overwrite arbitrary files. The issue was addressed with improved checks. Regarding DELD, which was impacted by VI, a malicious attacker with arbitrary read and write capability may be able to bypass pointer authentication. A race condition was addressed with additional validation. Regarding family sharing, which was impacted by Thess, an app may be able to read sensitive location information. This issue was addressed with improved data protection. Regarding image I.O., which was impacted by Bi, processing an image may lead to a denial of service and processing a maliciously crafted file may lead to unexpected app termination. Processing an image may lead to a denial of service. An out-of-bounds read issue was addressed with improved input validation and an integer overflow was addressed with improved input validation. Regarding kernel, which was impacted by before, a local attacker may be able to determine kernel memory layout and a local attacker may be able to cause unexpected system shutdown. An information disclosure issue was addressed with improved private data redaction for log entries, and an out-of-bounds read was addressed with improved input validation, and a type confusion issue was addressed with improved memory handling. Regarding keychain access, which was impacted by WAMI, an attacker may be able to cause unexpected app termination. 
a type confusion issue was addressed with improved checks. Regarding LibXPC, which was impacted by Rakshi, an app may be able to bypass privacy preferences. A permissions issue was addressed with additional restrictions. Regarding messages, which was impacted by, an app may be able to view a contact's phone number in system logs. The issue was addressed with improved checks. Regarding network extension, which was impacted by, private browsing may leak some browsing history. A privacy issue was addressed with improved private data redaction for log entries. Regarding OpenSSH, which was impacted by them, a remote attacker may be able to cause arbitrary code execution. His is a vulnerability in open source code, and Apple software is among the affected projects. Regarding Package Kit, which was impacted by NAM, an app may be able to access user-sensitive data, and an app may be able to modify protected parts of the file system, and a local attacker may be able to elevate their privileges. The issue was addressed with improved checks. A permissions issue was addressed with additional restrictions. Regarding photo storage, which was impacted by photos in the Hidden Photos album, may be viewed without authentication. An authentication issue was addressed with improved state management. Regarding Restore Framework, which was impacted by Euler, an app may be able to modify protected parts of the file system. An input validation issue was addressed with improved input validation. Regarding Safari, which was impacted by, an app may bypass gatekeeper checks, and visiting a website that frames malicious content may lead to UI spoofing. A race condition was addressed with improved locking. The issue was addressed with improved UI handling. Regarding Sandbox, which was impacted by length, an app may be able to bypass privacy preferences, and an app may be able to access protected user data. This issue was addressed through improved state management, and a path handling issue was addressed with improved validation. Regarding security, which was impacted by third-party app extensions may not receive the correct sandbox restrictions. An app may be able to read Safari's browsing history. An access issue was addressed with additional sandbox restrictions, and this issue was addressed with improved redaction of sensitive information. Regarding scripting bridge, which was impacted by Bray, an app may be able to access information about a user's contacts. A privacy issue was addressed with improved private data redaction for log entries. Regarding security initialization, which was impacted by Bio, an app may be able to access protected user data. This issue was addressed with improved validation of symlinks. Regarding setup assistant, which was impacted by enabling lockdown mode while setting up a Mac, may cause file vault to become unexpectedly disabled. A logic issue was addressed with improved state management regarding shortcuts which was impacted by day. A shortcut may be able to use sensitive data with certain actions without prompting the user. And a shortcut may be able to bypass sensitive shortcuts app settings. And a shortcut may be able to bypass internet permission requirements. And an app may be able to access user sensitive data. A logic issue was addressed with improved checks. And this issue was addressed by adding an additional prompt for user consent and this issue was addressed by removing the vulnerable code. Regarding Siri, an attacker with physical access may be able to use Siri to access sensitive user data, and an attacker with physical access to a device may be able to access contacts from the lock screen. This issue was addressed by restricting options offered on a locked device. Regarding Storage Kit, a malicious app may be able to gain root privileges. The issue was addressed with improved checks. Lastly, Regarding sudo, an app may be able to modify protected parts of the file system. The issue was addressed with improved checks. So, that was all about this build. The rest of the build seems identical to the previous one. So that was it. Hope it was useful. Consider like for the video, subscribe to the channel, and if you have any questions, just comment down below. Thanks for watching, and have a great day ahead.